Hello, my name is Daphne Taylor Garcia, and I am a professor in the Department of Ethnic Studies here at UC San Diego. My research focuses on decolonial philosophy. Decolonial philosophy is the study of how colonialism has shaped the world we live in and examines the social relations created across generations and geographies as a result of it. Importantly, I also examine how we might forge new modes of existence. Let me begin with a question for you. What do you say when you are asked to specify your race? Especially on official forms where limited options are given. What, what do you put down? The U.S. Census asserts that Mexican, Puerto Rican, Salvadorian, Dominican, uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, etc., are places of origin and that race is either white, black, American Indian, or Asian. My own family is of indigenous, African, European, and Chinese lineage. My father was half black and half white, born in Trinidad, and my mother was born in central Mexico. Like many, but not all, people from the Caribbean and central Mexico, my parents were ambivalent about how they communicated their racial identification to their children. They of course told us about our African and indigenous ancestry, but tended to, to refer to themselves as Mexican, Trinidadian, and West Indian. My father, along with his mother and siblings, moved from Trinidad to Toronto, Canada in the 1970s, the birthplace of his father, uh, when my father was already in his 30s. We moved to Scarborough, a predominantly migrant community that at the time was largely Caribbean. My father had met my mother in Mexico City years previous when she was part of the cleaning staff where he stayed. He asked her to move with him to Toronto to start a family, and she agreed. The fact that neither of my parents spoke about identity in ways that resonated in Anglo settler contexts created a situation in which I generally knew some of the facts of my lineage, but I didn't have a sense of a homogenous racial nor national identity. My own physical appearance didn't provide any clear direction either. So this created challenges for answering the question that I often received, which was, what are you? Census and other official forms push us to identify in particular terms and to pick only one category at a time. The fact that Mexican arguably operates as a racial category in the United States is not acknowledged, and there is no room made to contend with the fact that terms can change meaning across time and space. For many of us, these questions of racial identity can be difficult to answer because they assert not only that everyone is only one of these racial categories at a time, but that we should immediately know which one to select Many Latinxes are told that their responses are incorrect or that their responses make little sense. This problem has led to multiple revisions to how the census question is asked to try to coax a quote unquote correct answer. Part of my research is to answer why this is happening. Why is it that so many people of indigenous lineage in Latin America do not know who their relatives are and why do so many people of African lineage in Latin America not identify as black? I also respond to the question, what exactly are we? From the start of my college days at Trent University, a small college about an hour and a half from Toronto, I made a decision to focus on the social, historical, and philosophical questions about colonialism and took courses that would help me understand why it is that so many of us remain in the lowest income brackets over generations while being politically and socially marginalized. In fact, if it wasn't for the critical theory and philosophy courses I took, I would have probably dropped out of college entirely because I did not feel that the other courses I took helped explain my reality. So I focused on taking courses that taught me about colonialism, critical theory, and existentialism, a particular branch of philosophy. But I didn't plan to go to college at all so all of these questions I had about history, philosophy, could have gone unanswered. For whatever reason, neither of my parents talked to me about going to college. It wasn't on my map as something I needed or even wanted to do. 
It was actually a high school teacher who suggested that I should consider becoming a teacher. And I then learned about a college program that offered support services to someone like me who had to figure out post-secondary education on her own. So I applied to Trent and only to Trent. I figured if I didn't get in, college was not meant to be. My teenage brother who was 14 at the time came to live with me while I went to college. We decided it would be good for him to spend some time in a new context and to hopefully focus on school as well. For the last two years of my college degree, I focused on my coursework while providing a home for my brother. I applied to UC Berkeley for a PhD program in ethnic studies and was accepted. It was there that I had the opportunity to examine the history of Spanish colonialism and to think about the material, psychological, and intellectual legacies of multiple colonialisms. I have now spent about half of my life in California. A common U.S. response to Latinxes who are unsure of their racial identity is to insult them for their apparent ignorance. Another response is to insist that they should identify as either Black or Indigenous and deride them if they don't, or conversely, tell them that they should not identify as either one. My research takes this approach. First, I do not take people as givens nor as stagnant entities, but rather as conscious beings who are always in a process of becoming. How they understand their place in the world today can change with new information, new experiences, and new vantage points. I also center in my research working class brown people who struggle to answer the race question as not necessarily ignorant, but rather as telling us something important about the history and experiences of colonialism in the Americas. That premise led me to seek to understand the conditions that make their response to the question of racial identity possible. My work is about connecting us to our histories, to explain these issues, naming the ideologies that keep us from understanding why it is that most of us remain economically and socially marginalized, even after many people who look and sound exactly like us have been here for centuries, and to embrace the study of colonialism and coloniality to facilitate seeing ourselves accurately. This involves facing our history, understanding how it connects to other people's histories, examining our perceptions of ourselves and of other people, imagining the world we want to see, and then figuring out what we can do to bridge the gap between the world we want and the world we have. A part of that process is questioning the demands being placed on us when we are asked to choose a race. It also requires examining how the decisions we make impact others. If you are watching this video, it's because someone has put college on your radar. For first-generation Latinx students, you will be the first in your family to have a chance to study your history, politics, artists, and philosophers. Note that my own story of getting to be a professor at UCSD was not linear, nor is it a common story. I didn't even mention the many jobs I had or the breaks I took in between degrees, nor that I was a mature student when I started. Whatever your path is, remember that going to a university like UCSD is always a possibility. Ethnic studies, the department I work in, is a field that emerged from social movements and centers the perspectives of the colonized. Here you can find a small but growing community of Latinx faculty who are here for you to learn from, talk to, get help from, and to find an intellectual community with. So come to UCSD and take ethnic studies.